Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman and we're taking a look today at the new Surface Laptop from Microsoft. This is their latest foray into hardware. Uh, this is kind of their low-end device in the product line. It starts at $1,000 and it runs the new Windows 10 S, which is very restrictive. And I'll show you some of those restrictions here in just a second. Now, I do want to mention in the interest of full disclosure that I paid for this with my own funds. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review and no one is reviewing this content before it is posted. So let's take a closer look at the hardware now. I went for the least expensive version of this laptop, $999 that comes with a dual core Intel KB Lake processor, four gigabytes of RAM and 128 gigabytes of solid state storage. The build quality is exceptionally nice on here. It's made out of aluminum, very nice and smooth. It's got this uh, fuzzy texture here on the keyboard deck. I'm hoping it'll last a long time. It's very similar to uh, what you might have experienced on some of the Surface tablet keyboard docks. And uh, this one, of course, is a laptop and it's got that uh, similar feel. The keyboard itself feels about the same. It is backlit, uh, very well spaced, excellent keyboard and uh, decent travel on it too. I was quite uh, pleased typing on it, so that won't be an issue on this one. Uh, the trackpad also feels very nice. One of the things that Microsoft has done with their hardware is probably made uh, the nicest trackpads I've seen on a Windows PC, and this one uh, continues that, so all, that, all good on that front. The display is a bit iffy for me. It's a 13 and a half inch display, 2256 by 1504, so it's 201 pixels per inch, so that's a Retina uh, high DPI display, but there is a good amount of bleed through on it that uh, you'll notice if you've got solid colors here up on the screen. So you can see there's a bit of a glow here at the bottom, uh, something that I usually don't like to see on higher end displays. It is an IPS display, which is why you get some of that bleed through, but uh, it is there. It is a touch display though, so you can touch things and move them around. Uh, it also works with the Surface Pen as well as the Surface Dial. Overall, the hardware weighs 2.76 pounds or 1.25 kilograms, so fairly lightweight for uh, what you got here. Not too bad to carry around. It actually feels very nice in the hand. It just has a very premium uh, feel to it, which it should for uh, the price point that they're asking for this. And by the way, the top end model with the i7, 16 gigs of RAM and a 512 gig SSD is about $2,200. So uh, you can get pretty pricey on this one if you configure it upwards. I don't think you can upgrade this yourself. It doesn't look like it's easy to get inside of it. Now for ports, it is very limited. Uh, you've got a single USB 3 port here. This is a display port output right here for attaching a uh, you know, external display to it. You have a headphone microphone jack there. Uh, this little thing looks like an antenna for the Wi-Fi or for the Bluetooth. It does have wireless AC built in. Uh, over here is another antenna area. And this looks like an SD card slot, but it's actually for its power. So it's got the same uh, magnetic power thing that the other Surface devices have. It doesn't stay in very well. It tends to just pop out with just the slightest tug, which is good. You don't want your laptop uh, falling on the floor when you trip over it, but it is very sensitive. It just comes right out there. And that's it for ports. Surprisingly, no USB Type-C or Thunderbolt or anything else that we're seeing on some uh, comparably priced Windows laptops out there. Really basic transportation. The other thing that's very basic here is its operating system. This comes equipped now with the new Windows 10 S. In fact, I think this is the first laptop to feature it. And it's Windows 10. We'll get a little closer look at it in a second here. It is Windows 10. It works just like Windows does but it is very restrictive in how it lets you install software. Let's take a closer look and see what some of those limitations are. Now on the surface, pardon the pun, Windows 10 S looks and feels just like any other version of Windows 10. In fact, it really is, uh, with one big exception, and that is you can only install things that come from the Microsoft Store. So here's an example. I downloaded uh, the Google Chrome web browser setup from Google, and if I click to run that setup application, it's not going to let me install it. It says for security and performance, Windows 10 S only runs verified apps from the store, capital store, because it's referring to Microsoft's own store here. And if your app is not in this store, it will not install with Windows 10 S. So for example, if I look for Google Chrome, I'm not going to find it on here because at the time that I'm shooting this, uh, Google does not make their Chrome browser accessible to Microsoft Store, and therefore I cannot install it. So I'm going to be uh, stuck with the Edge browser. I also looked for Firefox on there as well, not there either. So I'm sure at some point those folks might move over to uh, the store if there's enough users of Windows 10 S to justify it. But at this point, your favorite apps may not be accessible on uh, your device. Likewise, if you have things on a, on a USB stick, for example, so let me just close this window out for a second here. And if I go over to, uh, for example, just an application that I can run usually direct from a USB stick, I'm going to get uh, the same uh, message here. It says, for security 
security and performance, this mode of Windows only runs verified apps from the store. Now, it does give you the option, though, if you want to override this, but it's going to potentially cost you some extra money. So in order to basically install or run whatever you want, uh, you do have to upgrade to Windows 10 Pro. And for 2017, that upgrade is free for Windows 10 S users. However, after 2017, it's going to cost $50 to make that upgrade. So right now, I can click free here in the store. And after I do that, Windows will become magically unlocked. And then I can install uh, other software on here. So that is really the big difference here between Windows 10 S and other versions of Windows. If your favorite app isn't in the store, it's not accessible unless you upgrade to Pro. For the rest of the year, it's not such a big deal. It's free to do so, but after that, you're going to have to add 50 bucks to whatever you paid for your PC to get that privilege. Let's see how magical this is. I'm going to go ahead and click this free uh, upgrade here and see what happens. I'll click install, and it's wanting to know if I've saved all my files. I'll say, yeah, let's go. I guess there must be a reboot involved here to make this work. So uh, it's going to unlock Windows. I would imagine that uh, Windows already has everything it needs built in. It's just a matter of uh, getting a license switch turned on here. So let's see what happens here and uh, how seamless, hopefully, this process will be. So it only took about five minutes or so to do everything. It looked like it was doing an update. That was pretty much what it felt like. Uh, so now that we're done here, let's log back into our uh, computer and see if we now have a full version of Windows accessible to us here. So. Uh, there we go. It says, success, we have switched your PC to Windows 10 Pro. Uh, this is permanent, by the way, and it's locked to the PC that does it. So if you want to go back to Windows 10 S, you're out of luck. I'm guessing maybe you could reinstall it or something. I don't think you can get at the moment Windows 10 S on its own. Uh, so if we go over here to uh, back to my downloads folder, for example, let's try to install Chrome now, and we should get that uh, little security screen popping up here. Yep, there we go. And uh, now it looks like we're able to install applications on our computer that are not on the Windows Store. So in many ways, this Windows 10 S is very limiting, although at the moment it's very easy to get out of it. I think from a security standpoint, it might be better for uh, some folks who tend to click on things that they shouldn't click on. It certainly won't make you immune to whatever Windows vulnerabilities are discovered, but it does add an additional layer of security to prevent uh, apps that have not been verified by Microsoft first from getting onto your machine. So that's a plus, but again, after 2017, it'll cost you $50 to get out of that uh, little bit of a jail there. But uh, we are up and running now, so let's take a look and see what the rest of this thing can do. All right, so now that we've got all of that Windows 10 stuff out of the way, I've got Google Chrome running here with my 1080p 60 video file on YouTube. Uh, we're seeing uh, just a couple of skip frames when it first got started here, but uh, generally it's been able to keep up just fine. These KB Lake processors really uh, do everything you want to do quite well here on the web. So web browsing and video watching, Netflix, all that kind of stuff is going to be uh, just fine on here and works as expected. Now you're going to hear me talk a little bit about the Yoga 7 2013 from Lenovo. Similar device, it's actually a two-in-one that kind of converts into a tablet about the same size and weight and a little less expensive, but with the same processor as this one on board. I think it's a good uh, point of comparison. We looked at that one just a couple of weeks ago. Now I run a benchmark called the browserbench.org speedometer test for web browsing and seeing how well it can handle web applications. And on that test, we got a score of 124, which actually lines up right within the margin of error uh, with the Yoga 7 2013 that also has that same i5 7200U processor on board. And also, of course, does very well with all the stuff you would do typically with a laptop like this, like Microsoft Word, uh, due to that processor, very fast and responsive here, even on the low-end device. One of the things I like about the 3 by 2 aspect ratio that Microsoft uses for these screens is that you can fit more of a document on screen while you're working on it. So you might get more letterboxing when watching a movie, especially a widescreen movie, but documents do better because the screen is taller than many of the uh, 1080p 16 by 9 laptops out there. Now, like many other 13-inch laptops at or around its price point, this one does not have a GPU built in for graphics, so it's not going to be so great on games. But uh, Intel has been making some decent progress on the built-in graphics performance of their chips, and we're seeing some of that improvement here. Uh, so I'm going to run Rocket League real quick. We're going to run at the native resolution here, 1900 by 1200, but I turned all the settings down just to get it to uh, run at a passable frame rate here. So I'm uh, averaging about 40 frames per second or so. It sometimes dips down into uh, the upper 20 low 30s, so definitely playable. It's a little ugly like this, but uh, it's capable of playing some modern stuff here, just not as pretty as it might be on a laptop that might have a GPU, but typically those are larger in size and weight. 
But for gaming, what works best on machines like this are things like Minecraft here. This is the Java version of Minecraft, the one that most people still run. Uh, we're running it at the native resolution here with no optimizations installed, 2256 by 1504. And you can see we're actually pulling 30 frames per second in complex areas and uh, in areas that are li less complex, I'm getting above 60 frames per second. So it seems to be uh, doing quite well with a lot of this casual stuff. And those are the kinds of games that I would recommend running on here. And if you're sticking with Windows 10 S and having to just shop in the Microsoft Store, I think there's going to be a lot of great uh, casual tablet-y kind of games that'll run on here. And of course, because it has the touch screen, uh, you can also uh, run some of those games with their native interface as well. And I also ran the 3D Mark Cloud Gate test. And on that one, we got a score of 5,649, which graphically puts this a little behind the Yoga 720. And I think the reason is, uh, is that that Yoga 720 has DDR4 RAM, so its memory is slightly faster than the DDR3 RAM that is in the Surface laptop here, and that, I think, might explain the graphical discrepancy. Uh, what's of interest, though, is that the CPU performance on this one's a little better than the Yoga 720 is, so it's six of one, half dozen of the other, at least on that test, but uh, overall, graphically, the Yoga does perform a little faster. Uh, of interest, though, for me, was the fact that this is in dual-channel configuration on the 4 gig model, which a lot of times when they uh, have a four gig device, they have a single module of memory in single channel configuration, which slows it down quite a bit. Uh, this one is in dual channel, so you'll get uh, the best of what you can get out of that available RAM. Now, contrary to some reports I was reading, this is not a fanless device, even at the low end. There is a little fan here on the back that will kick on, uh, but they really have a nice cooling system here because it's not on the bottom. It's right on that curve here that meets the screen, so it usually will not uh, be blocked while you have it on a lap or on a table or something, so that was pretty nice. It's also a very quiet fan. In fact, even under load, it's a lot quieter than many other 13-inch laptops I've looked at, including that Yoga 720. Some folks wrote in to say the 720's fan was getting a little loud under load. Uh, this one was really quiet, probably among the quieter laptops I have tested here on the channel across uh, any brand. I also ran the 3D Mark stress test, which runs a graphical benchmark over and over again to see if that has any impact in performance as things heat up, and it scored 98.3% on that test, which means that it will uh, largely keep its performance even when it's under heavy load. Now let's take a look at Kodi and some media playback. I like to really push the envelope here with these new 140 megabits per second 10-bit files here, and uh, like other KB Lake machines, it seems to be keeping up just fine with uh, some pretty high-end video here. So no problem on the real top end of the spectrum, and that is due to the fact that these uh, new chips are actually optimized for all of this crazy new video formats that are out there. So uh, not bad on that front. I believe you can hook this up to a 4K monitor as well, so those 4K files will play back at their uh, native resolution pretty close to perfectly. And also Blu-ray MKV files, which are less demanding on this newer hardware, uh, also seem to be working fine. I'm not seeing any noticeable uh, drop frames or skip frames or anything here, so I think you will have a good media playback experience on here overall. So let's talk about battery life now. The battery life on this is pretty decent. Now Microsoft says you'll get 14 and a half hours of straight video playback on a charge on it. Uh, that's great, but I think a lot of people are going to be doing actual work, and I'm seeing about eight to nine hours, so enough to get through a workday, you know, running web browsers and word processors and Excel and that kind of thing. I think if you are running it in Windows 10 S mode, where you're restricted to the uh, less power-consuming Edge browser, you might see a little better battery life, but uh, generally, I would say eight to nine hours is what you can expect out of this uh, doing general work. If you start loading up 3D CAD and video editing and stuff on it, that will certainly uh, decrease your battery life significantly, but it does that on all other devices too. I think what sets this one apart from its competitors uh, is not its price, because it is priced a little higher, it's just the build quality. It really is a nicely designed laptop, uh, very unique in that you've got that fuzzy keyboard deck here. It actually feels kind of nice. It's not cold when you rest your wrists on it. It's very comfortable. I don't know how well it'll look over a long period of time, but I think the fabric here does uh, add some uh, class to the device overall, and it just feels nice in the hand while you're carrying it. It's got a very smooth uh, surface here, even for aluminum, it really just feels like a, a nice device to carry around with you. Now, if you're out in the marketplace and you're looking at this or the Yoga 720, I think the Yoga 720 is a better value. It's, it's about the same performance, but uh, you get more ports. You got one of those Thunderbolt ports on there, so you have better docking options and uh, peripheral add-ons that you might be able to do with it later. And we've explored some of that in our uh, Yoga videos. And uh, for the price point, you're going to get a little more computer with more RAM and storage on the Lenovo side than you will here on the the Microsoft side. So what you're paying for here, I think, is probably better battery life, a quieter fan, uh, more of a luxurious experience, perhaps, than you might get out of something that 
has a similar configuration for less money. They've really put the uh, investment here, and your investment too for that matter, into the hardware design. And if you are someone who travels a lot and just wants something elegant and uh, really well constructed and simple, uh, this will certainly do that for you. Although I do highly recommend that if you get one of these things, uh, upgrade it to that Windows 10 Pro before the end of the year so you can get that functionality of being able to install whatever software you want uh, for free. Because if you wait too long, it's going to be a $50 premium on top of the high price you're already paying. Paying. So be sure to do that upgrade first. So that'll do it for the Windows laptop here from Microsoft, the Surface laptop. And this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters, including Gold Level supporters Mark Bollinger and Cody Falk. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.